Hey friends, and welcome back to another video on Node.js security best practices. And this time we're gonna cover things like security hardening and why hardening is important, how not to leak your server information. And then we're gonna talk about what NPM Ignore can do for your project and why you should really use it and how to not mess up your application with a child processes and why basically to be careful. So as you notice, this is the third video, meaning there are two more. So you can go check them out because Node.js security is a very important topic. So every Node.js developer should be aware of that. And if, even if you're not a Node developer, you should already be aware of these best practices and best, because you can apply it in every other context, all right? So let's start with the very first one. What is security hardening? Well, let's say you are working for a company or even let's say you have your own project and you're hosting this application, let's say Node application on the server, and you have customers that are hitting this application, all right? So here you're carrying most of the responsibility because your Node application should be secure here because this is a B2C scenario where customers are coming to your business and you gotta make sure that, okay, customers are also secure because there's no nothing leaking on the customer side, but most of the re responsibility lies on your side. But there are also cases where you are selling your application to another business, all right? Let's say you are selling your node application this one to some kind of a bank, let's say this is a bank and you're going to install, they are going to install your application after buying your application and run it within their bank. Now here we can see that you're not only responsible for your own application, but you're also responsible for your application being secure within a different context. So as you can imagine, it's like double responsibility and you should be really, really secure or try to be as secure as you can. That's why a lot of companies try to harden their application. Hardening means basically extra security for like Node.js application. If you're using Express as a framework, your Express should be hardened. And usually the security engineers within both of the companies rely on this document called OWASP. Uh, OWASP ASVS, which, is that, which stands for Application Security Verification Standard. This is the fourth. And if you scroll down, you will see that it's a very, very extensive document that literally covers every point regarding architecture, design, authentication, logging, error handling, validation, basically everything that you can imagine. And actually, this is a very important document for developers. And let me know in the comments if you want me to cover parts of it or maybe the whole document, because this is like the holy, holy grail of the is that the word holy grail of the security? I think it's a word. But anyway, what, what you're, you're usually gonna do with hardening is first of all, follow the official documentation maybe of Node.js for hardening it. If there is no official document for hardening, maybe you will stumble upon something like this, like I did on the internet for hardening express. And this is a cheat sheet. So if you scroll down, you will see that you can harden the X powered by, meaning disabling this information, uh, cross origin resource sharing, security headers. We already talked about this in the previous videos, secrets, secure sessions, process requests, forgery protection, and so on. So basically you need to go over these documents and keep in mind that there's a thing called security hard. Now we already saw this thing called X powered by, and this is our second point that we're gonna discuss, which is leaking server information. Now, whenever the user hits your application, um, basically it's not a given that it's a normal user. It can be hacker as well. And if your node application reveals some information about itself, like if the hacker knows that you are actually running a node application, which shouldn't be the case, right? The, the hacker shouldn't know oh, what application you're running. Maybe it's a .NET application, maybe it's a a Spring Boot application, they shouldn't know because if they do know that you're running a node application, they can use one of the vulnerabilities that are actually being revealed every single day and hack your application. Also, uh, what you need to be aware of is the proxy that, are, uh, that is running before in front of your application. Let's say it's an Nginx uh, proxy, reverse proxy, because Nginx can also reveal its information and also not good to for the user or for the hacker to know that you have an, a proxy in front of your node application. So what can you do is first of all, if you're using Express, make sure that you disable this X powered by because otherwise you're gonna get a header called X powered by Nginx or node or Express, which is going to reveal <laughs> what server you're using with, with every HTTP request that the user makes. 
And also don't forget about Nginx because you can use this thing called server tokens off. And this configuration directive tells Nginx not to include the server software and version information in the server HTTP response head, all right? Or you can simply remove it manually, like, like very similar to how you can do it within Express like this, all right? So next point we're gonna talk about is npm ignore. So we already know about git ignore, meaning git ignore simply doesn't push your uh, files that you list there into the version control system, into git or github, whatever you're using. But there's also npm ignore and people usually forget about it because it's very common to have a modularized application where you're gonna split your uh, basically project into different modules and push them into a registry. A registry can be like an npm registry or maybe a different it registry. And you actually don't want to push the changes or push push some files into an npm registry. Like for example, your .env file with your environment variables. You may have to you may have it in git ignore, but you may forget to put it in the npm ignore. So never forget to use npm ignore, right? And you may use you may think like, okay, if I never push my env files to neither git or npm registry, where should I keep it in in a, in a flash drive or in a floppy disk? <laughs> and this is a kind of a common question, like it really depends on you if you're using some kind of a CI CD pipeline, or something like GitLab or Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions, you can actually save the secrets or environment variables within your platform on GitHub so that GitHub pulls them during the build in the pipeline. But if you're using Docker, you can also set them here also from a file to just read them from uh, during the runtime. If you're using Docker Compose, you can also read them from a file or from an environment variable in the pipeline. And if you're using Kubernetes, you can do the same, just go Google it, and I'm not gonna cover this in this video. All right, and the last point I wanna cover is child processes. What is child processes? Actually, so I wouldn't be surprised if you actually don't know about it, but child processes is are looking like this. So let me switch to this one. So it's very similar to um, worker threads. And I already have a video on worker threads. So what worker threads will do is it's going to, let's say you have one process, one node process, and usually it's running within one thread. Well, there it's not really one thread, but you can learn more about it in this video. I'm gonna link it in the description also here in the card above, but let's imagine this is only one thread and you can actually spin new threads within the same process. Now in comparison, the child processes, and this is native to Node.js, so if you've never seen this, just, just go and Google child processes. What it's gonna do is it's going to create a new process like generally. So this is one process and you can actually create a new process. So when should you use worker threads versus child processes? Well, worker threads is going to run within the same process, but if you want complete isolation and it, complete a separate process, then you should use child process, all right? Now, th here is basically a point about fault tolerance. If your process crashes here, all of your threads are going to crash as well. But if you don't want your new process to crash, or if you have two processes, one of them crashes, it's not going to affect the second one. So the use cases would be something like, let's say you have a desktop application, you have your one process, and you want to let your users to use kind of a notepad or a tech text pad, let's say. So you can spin a new project solely for this notepad for users to write some code, all right? So the ideas are limitless, well, why you would want to have a separate node process. And the way you would use it in the code is like this. First of all, you would import span, spawn, sorry, from child process and then spawn and basically put a new command. So node, and you can pass the name of the file just as if you would run a node application or node file. And you can of course listen to data. So these processes can actually communicate with each other. And you can also listen on close so that you can act however you want. Now, when does it get tricky, all right? Why did I say that you should be very careful? So let's say before you spawn this node process, you are making some, you're getting some requests from the user and you're, let's say, within the controller, you should just keep in mind that you should never spawn a new process based on this user's input. So let's say you should never let the user to define the name of the file that you want to spawn because 
this can be this can get very ugly, especially if you're not sanitizing your input from the user. And even if you're sanitizing, it's very easy to miss something. And then the attacker basically has control over all of your system, meaning they can literally invoke any file within your system and put any code malicious code that they want in the flags here or the arguments. Okay, so you should be very careful. Just keep in mind, whenever you're spawning a new node process, don't make it to rely on the user's input. All right. So this was it for this episode, guys, if you liked it, smash like as always and subscribe and let me know in the comments. First of all, if you like this video, and second of all, if you like to me, if you if you want me to make a video about this uh, OS security uh, document, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.